Hello everyone and thank you very much for joining me here at Angie B Crafts. So today we're going to be playing with inks and shaving foam. This is a technique that's been around for many, 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 many moons um, and is something that's quite good for doing with kids. Um, but I actually like it for doing in my creativity. So I'm going to be doing a series. So this is the first in a series about using shaving foam to get different backgrounds and then looking at what you can do with the different backgrounds. So this is how you can do it. You will need some inks of some description. You will need some paper or some card. You will need some shaving foam, just cheap shaving foam. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And either a flat surface that you don't mind getting covered in shaving foam or some sort of a tub. Now this tub is just a £1.50 storage tray that I got from B&M Bargains. If you're not from the United Kingdom, then B&M Bargains is a bit like Dollar Tree in America, I'm guessing. Um, cheap and cheerful, I think, is the best way to look at it. You will also need, which I've forgotten to get, aha, there we go, a ruler or something with a long flat edge. So this will be for cleaning up, for clearing off rather than cleaning up, sorry. And also some kitchen towel or something similar for actually wiping up the mess. So, first things first, we take our empty tray and our shaving foam, give it a good shake, as you do when you're using shaving foam. One thing I like about this activity is you end up smelling nice. And we just spray a layer into our tray. You don't have to fill the tray, it's going to expand. If you haven't used shaving foam before, then just be aware it does expand it does get bigger but it doesn't have to fill the whole tray you just need it an area that's going to cover enough of your card so that's roughly i'm working on roughly a6 so i took one piece of a4 and i've chopped it down into four pieces which takes it to a6 okay so the next thing we need is some color so to use the easiest way to do it so this is the most basic way of doing it is to use drips of color so I've got here some eyes ink pigments with droppy doodly doors on them. I've got some uh, bit of, bit of Liquitex. They've got they're like little pipettes. I've got some Dale Rowney. Um, I have some Distress Ink uh, reinkers. Um, I've got some eyes inks. These aren't the dropper ones. These are the ones that have got the nail the like nail brush thing in them. So I've got a few different inks here. So I'm going to go, I'm actually going to go for this beautiful, it's like a turquoise, a deep turquoise and this purple. I think they go beautifully together. The Liquitex, one, Liquitex ones, which is an acrylic ink. And they can sometimes, as they are being now, be troublesome to open. There we go. So these don't need to be shaken up. Some of them, if I show you on this one I'm hoping I can do it without disturbing there's actually a difference in color so there's some that looks a bit orange and then it looks a bit murky um, I don't know if you can see on the bottom there there's some murkiness so with these ones you need to get this is actually the I think this is the magenta no this is the scarlet so to get it scarlet you have to give it a shake to get the color going and with the yellow it kind of separates out so it's a much watery color at the bottom and darker at the top sorry and darker at the bottom but if you give it a shake with these ones you don't need to but I'm just in the habit of shaking everything so just something to be aware of and then you're just going to drop oh, I love this colour now I'm being really generous with this colour because I love it so much you don't have to use that much now something I haven't told you that you're going to need is something to move the ink once it's on here and again, this is personal choice. You don't have to move the ink at all. You can leave the ink exactly where it drops. You don't have to do anything. But moving it just gives it um, more interest. Now for this, you can use a stirring stick. You can use the end of a knife. I've got a paintbrush here. I'm just gonna use the end of it. So there's various things you can use. You can use your finger if you want to. So I'm just gonna start moving the ink using this. So you're already starting to see some wonderful striations of colour and I'm going to go across the way. 
I did this on a live and one of the ladies said it looked like the top of an iced bun and I think that's rather a good description right so there we have our first layer I'm just going to get some kitchen towel to give that a wipe off now I haven't pointed out this is my first time ever using my Tim Holtz mat this beautiful can I just show you look at the gloriousness of this my gorgeous brand new Tim Holtz mat I'm a little bit excited but that's by the by that's completely irrelevant to what we're doing but I'm happy bunny I have actually done an unboxing video of it if you want to have a look because I got a little bit excited because I hadn't realized what it was when it arrived so when this comes off you'll see it just looks like a little bit of a mess of colour and it doesn't look like you're going to get any of that pattern. I'm going to move my foam out of the way, pop this down on my nice brand new Tim Holtz mat and then we're going to clean it off. To clean it off, this is where you, your flat surface comes in, your flat end. You're just going to scrape across it and then you get this amazing reveal. I mean look at that, you wouldn't have known that that was underneath and I absolutely love this. One of the things I love about this is because you don't know what you're going to get. Now there is on here some, if I just show you at this end, there's still some of the foam. Remember your shaving foam and your ink have both got liquid in them. So your paper is going to get wet. So don't use a paper that isn't going to like getting wet or don't use it too much. And then you've got your piece okay so I'm going to put that to one side that can dry and I'm going to do some more pulls just using the same remember this is a series so this is just the first bit of what we can do with this I'm going to go straight back in on top the theory is that the, the layer that's on top of the foam that's the pattern and color pretty much that you're going to get when you do your pull So it's kind of the reverse, I suppose, of doing a gel pre gel pull because with a gel pull, the base layer becomes your top layer, whereas this is actually transferring the colour. So the colour transfers as it lays. There we go. Oh, I just love it. I love what you end up with because you can do all sorts with them. You can use them as backgrounds. You can die cut with them. You can stamp on top of them. You can draw around them. I'll show you some of the ones that I've done previously and let you see what I've done with them. So what I've done each time is just wipe off my ruler on the edge here and don't be afraid of doing that because you can use this and I'll show you how in a minute. So I'm going to pop in some more patterns here because we're getting a little bit kind of samey. So just doing something that simple I've just gone back and forward that's it. In fact, I'm going to leave it at that and let's see what we end. Oops. Let's see what we end up with when I don't throw all the random pieces of paper in. Let us have a look. I'm going to pop this in. So I'm not pressing really, really hard down. I don't want to go straight down to the bottom of the tray or of whatever surface you're working on. You can do this on a tray like this, on a tea tray. You can do it just onto your glass mat if you want to. It's entirely up to you. But you don't want to push straight down to the bottom because that means there's nothing for your next layer for you to do your next pull. You're just wanting to take the very top layer of colour off, basically. So we're going to do this. and cut all these colours together. are just gorgeous. Right, now for this one, I'm going to, if I can find a corner, see the card's getting a little bit damp here. I'm just going to take that end up as well, but I'm going to keep this on. And the reason for that is you can also apply it straight from your ruler or your palette knife onto your card or your paper. So bear in mind the ink that is on, t on now in contact with the card is what is going to be transferring. So even though this looks really pretty on the back, this isn't what I'm going to be getting. So you might get something similar, but don't assume that what you look at is what you're going to get, because you may well be disappointed if you go with that. Look at that, that looked nothing like it, did it? So you can keep using this. I'm going to do another one without, again, I'm not going to get rid of what's here. I'm going to go across the ways this time. Just doing little kind of wibbly wobblies up and down 
that's a technical term isn't it wibbly wobblies and then the last one I'm just going to scrape it off so you can see there because I've done the wibbly wobblies I have ended up I'll bring it up to the camera I've got those like lines going through it throughout all the colour which just looks to me that looks fabulous you can see it here particularly there's these little lines fantastic so you're obviously getting less colour the more you use it the less col less intense colour you're going to get because it's mixing in more and more and I'm just going to splat this one on spread it about a bit and just see what we end up with because we're getting to the end you can see we're getting just one mass of colour it's whenever whenever you mix colour eventually it becomes just one colour it all mixes together and you end up with one mass of colour but with this look you can still get some fantastic backgrounds in a really simple way so if you want to if we then go back to this and we can see the difference in intensity of colour this has gone very much blue and pastely so I'm going to pop this on this edge because I want, still want to use this vibrant stuff here right now I'm liking the look here of the way this is kind of all eking up that way but I'm going to try a different substrate so as well as some paper I've also got here some um, just packaging card I think this is probably the back of an envelope or something I'm not sure could actually be card I've paid for I know there's some more further down that is this is uh, IKEA packaging so yeah now I've not used it on this before so this is an experiment for me but I thought hey why not do it on here and see what we end up with so I've not pushed it down as far so because this is a more solid substrate it's not delved in as well as much so I'm going to pop it back on and be conscious of those areas where it hasn't gone in as much so I'm having to press deeper down so that's something to be aware of if you've got a less flexible substrate that you're applying it to you have to press further down to get it to gain colour so be aware of that now this is going to look different because it's not on a white background but I still really like how that's come out how cool is that it reminds me of um, like antique papers it's kind of got that look about it Let's use what's on here now and go on to another piece. Let's use our IKEA packaging. I'm going to do this little jittery thing with the edge of the knife. I'll go to the other side and come back the other way. Let's see if we can go a little bit nearer to that edge. Just a little bit. So you're not going to get a strong an obviously vibrant colour because you're not going on to white and if you think about the reason you get your vibrant colours is to do with whether you've got white behind them so colours aren't obviously as vibrant on black because it absorbs more of the light now that one to me it's okay but I think I want a little bit more on it so what I'm going to do I'm going to bring this in now and these bits here that are still quite vibrant I'm just going to use the end of the knife as a kind of spatula and just splat them on so it's just using up what you've got and you can build up layers of colour so if you don't like it you can change it just put another layer on I've just realised I've done this on the side that's got the, the uh, writing on it which is a bit of a silly thing to do but we can always trim it down so it doesn't matter oh that's better that's got more vibrancy about it and more colour to it I still prefer we do these side by side I prefer this one to this one but it's just different looks isn't it and that's what we're into getting we're trying to figure out how to get different backgrounds that we can use so I'm going to do this very much as a splat and see what we end up with. There's still some of that vibrancy that was taken from the edge but it's coming through more of a blue now as it's starting to mix together. So you can keep going this is all one dunk of ink 
I've not added any extra ink and we're getting lots and lots of different backgrounds. Oops. So we've got some more here. I'm going to get the end of my brush and I'm just going to move it about a little bit more and just see if we can make it a little bit more interesting. I can feel that I'm getting near to the bottom. I've got a lot more contact with the base of the box, base of the tray. I quite like that pattern. That's kind of cute. Right, let's pop this in and see what we get. So we're back to the more flexible paper. So this is going to be more willing to come into contact because it's kind of folding into the nooks and crannies as there's more or less of the foam in any given area. But we're still, you can see as you get nearer to the bottom, it's more difficult to get all the bits. I'm not going to redunk that, I'm going to see what we end up with. Ready, steady, reveal! Oh wow! Oh my word, I think that's my favourite one. That is brilliant. I love it. Love, 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 love it. I mean, I love these colours together anyway, but how amazing does that look? So you can just keep going. I absolutely love this technique. It is brilliant. I'm going to pop another one. I'll give this another swirl and see if we can get a little bit more of that nice mix. Because we've still got quite a lot of intense purple here, so we can start to draw that in a little bit. Do, 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 do. So I'm not doing any technical stuff here, I'm just messing about with it, which is a really technical term isn't it? Mess about, but that's what it is, you just, you're experimenting and the other thing is you can't predict, you can to an extent, so if you wanted to, say you wanted to do a scene using the shaving foam method, you could, because you could make sure that there was blue at the top and green or brown at the bottom. So you could get the sky and the ground, you know, depending what you wanted, or you could do sand and sea and whatever. So you could do it, but you're not going to get to specifically choose exactly where all the colours go because they're going to move. Oh, this is another good one. Oh, I really like it when you mix it in a little bit more. Right. So as I said to you at the beginning, this is the first of the series. I'm just going to get some more of the paper and I'm going to show you one last thing you can do with these. The ink, once it's on, depending which ink it is, most of the inks become permanent when they're on the paper. It's worth then giving it a bit of a rub before you use a heat gun or anything on it, if you're choosing to use a heat gun straight off. I need to stick that one at that end. And the reason for that is if you have some foam still on it, and you then dry it off. I'll show you actually because I've got a little bit of foam just here, that little blue blob. I'll show you what happens when you dry it off. Bet it doesn't happen now, but this is what's happened in the past with me. So I'm getting my heat gun and warming it up a little bit first, and then I'm just going to lift it off the mat and heat that area. We'll heat all of it. Yeah, it's happened. So you can see here, you're almost trying to get it so that it's in focus but it's it's gone darker because you, that's where you had the foam so it's kind of had an intensity within the foam so it just looks a little bit different and I always think that looks out of place so I suggest if that's a look you're going for that's fine but if you don't want to do that just almost polish your papers before you put them up a bit before you put them up before you heat them up so that you're not going to get those little intense blobs. So let's do a couple of these as well, just give them a bit of a rub. So there's quite a few bits of foam here and also you can get a layer of the foam. Um, I suppose the same as you do if you use shaving foam in the bathroom sink, you get a layer because it's a form of soap isn't it? So you just want to take that off. And it just also brings the colours out just a little bit more if you do that. What I would say is you are adding liquid, so just be careful that you don't get pilling. If you feel like you're starting to get pilling, just let it dry naturally. Right, so let's give these a quick blast. I'm not going to dry them all off for you, but I'll just show you how they look.
I, I do love this technique it's brilliant and those two colours are just superb together so that's taken me half of a, a dropper full of each colour and I've got an awful lot of backgrounds and I could keep going there's plenty more in but let's see how many backgrounds we've made out of that so I've just dried off four and then we have do, 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 do. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we've got eleven backgrounds. So this was the last one we took, and this was the first one we took, and it's the same colours. So you can see the intensity really does fade back. The first one you've got a lot more of the the ink there, and even the ones where this one still has a bit more intensity because we've reactivated them a little bit by bringing some of the darker ones in you've got you've still got less of the intensity because you've got the foam is absorbing the color so you are going to gradually get less and less and depending what method you're using will determine what it looks like so if you're applying it using it using the knife or the, the palette knife as a spatula you get a very different look to when you're dunking straight in that's another one that's just scraping it across these ones were dunked straight in so it's really good to have a play and see what bits you like and what bits you don't like. So this is episode one, if you want, of the series. Um, I'm going to be looking at using different mediums. So looking at using some um, distress oxides, distress spray stains. Um, I'm going to see whether or not we can do anything with brushos or pretty amazing powder. No, blah, blah, blah. The Pretty Gets Gritty Explosion Powders, that was it. We'll do some pretty amazing sprays. We'll look at doing some mica powders. And we'll, let's just see what we can actually do with this. But I hope you found that useful. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye for now.